Okay, today's worksheet we have is balancing equation. In this uh, worksheet, there are four pages, but the fourth page is a link to a website. Yeah, we'll work on that later. Again, just a reminder, you can get a copy of this worksheet in the link below. So what we're doing is balancing equation. Uh, earlier, we learned how to count atoms and the formulas. So we want to know is where did the formula come from? Well, by combining different chemicals, you can create a certain type of formulas. Again, these formula comes from the scientists have already experimented on them. Now our job is to make the formula make sense by making sure that the equation is balanced out. So again, going back to our fruit to basket, let's say for example, we have N2 here plus H2 and it comes out to be NH3. So continue with our fruit of basket. Let's pretend we went to the store to buy a variety of fruits. And let's say this one is our apples. Now these apples, they only sell them in packets of two. They don't come by themselves. You cannot buy them individually. Now in reality, that's not true, but for the purpose of chemistry, let's just keep it that way. And then you have these, uh, you wanna buy these bananas. And they comes also in packets of two. So whenever you buy these green apples or these special bananas, they can only comes in packet of two. You cannot buy them individually. And then when you bring them home, you want to make a fruit basket for your friends and family. And you want it to keep it in this formula. You want one green apple. And you want three banana. And that makes up your basket of fruits. And you just like that number. So when you go to the store and you bought two of this and two of this, you couldn't make this much. Therefore, we want to make this basket of fruits. We notice that we need extra bananas. So since we only have a packet of two, we want more. So looking at the formula in terms of the apples, you notice that you have an extra apple. Once you open it, you have an extra apples. You don't want it to go to waste. So you're going to make another set. But we noticed we ran out of bananas, so we have to buy more of these packets of bananas. So we're gonna go back to buy more. So now we have four. That's enough to fill one basket with one leftover, but we're not able to complete another basket. So in other words, we're gonna want more Banana. So we'll buy another packet of two. Now we have six total bananas to use. Three for this basket. And three for this basket. Cool. So now we have enough. We have a set of apples that we can split for one of each basket. And then we have six bananas that we can split three in here and three in here. So our equation comes out to, we have one set of this. We'll put a number one in the front. We have three sets of this. And then we're able to make two baskets of fruits. And that's balancing equation. So that's one way to do it by drawing pictures. Another way to do it is to use a balancer. Okay, so let's look at number four example. The balancer we want to start is right here in the middle. We'll just uh, put all the available elements. We have Zn, we have H, and we have Cl. Notice that these elements are found on both sides of the equation. Now, if you didn't notice that in chemistry, we use the yield arrow instead of the equal sign because when you combine this with this, it turns into this. 
and this no longer equals to this, like in math. So the left side does not equal the right side. It's telling us that when these things combine, it turns to this. And that's why we use the right arrow. And as we move on, you will notice that chemistry does have a lot of things that are different from all the other subjects. It says chemistry is cool like that. All right, anyways, going back to our work, we have these elements. Then you want to put the equal sign for each one to identify how many there are. On the left side, we have one zinc. We also have one H and we have one CL. On the right side, we have is one zinc. We have is two H. If you forgot how to count your atoms, make sure you review the videos on how to count atoms. And then we have two CL. So now looking at the balancer, we notice that the equation is not balanced on the left side versus the right side. You're going to multiply by using coefficient that's going to shift the balance. So let's start with H. We notice there's two H on this side, but there's only one on this side. So we're going to put a coefficient. What can we multiply by this H to make the left side equal to the right side? We can multiply it by a two. So now by putting this two here, it has changed both my H and it changes my CL. So my H has now increased to a two. So I'll cross out the original, it'll become a two. And my CL also changes into a two. Now notice both sides of the balancer are balanced. That means the equation is balanced. When everything else that doesn't have a coefficient in front, just like in math, for example, when you have the X and you leave it by itself, you automatically assume that there is a one in front of the X representing one X. But for science, we would like to put that one down. So it's easier that we don't forget. So we have one here, one here, and one here. And now our equation is balanced. All right, let's go on to the second page. Let's try number 11. So we'll use the um, chem balancer method. First, by writing all the available elements that are found in the equation. Again, this thing, you will have a lot of erasing. So you want to use the pencil recommended. We'll put equal sign on both sides. And the balancer usually wrote right down in the middle where the arrows is found. On the left side, we have 1Fe. On the right side, we have this 3Fe. We have 2H, also 2H. Hey, that one's balanced. Cool. Oxygen we have is 1 and 4 oxygen. Okay, this one's starting to get a little bit more complicated. So you can pick any of You can start with Fe or you can start with oxygen. That's totally your choice. I always recommend go for the larger formula. So notice oxygen is found in two larger formula. I would recommend starting with that. Because Fe is by itself, the number can easily be adjusted as needed. So I would leave that one last. So we can do with oxygen first. Notice there's four on this side and only one on this side. So we can multiply this by four. That changes both your H and your oxygen. Don't forget about that. So our oxygen have changed to a four and our hydrogen multiply have changed to an eight. Okay, so oxygen is balanced, but we have unbalanced hydrogen. That's no problem. We can just rebalance it again. We can multiply the H by two times what? It's gonna give us eight. We can multiply by a four. So that changes our hydrogen into an eight as well. So now both the oxygen and hydrogen is balanced. The only thing we have left is our Fe, iron. So there's only one on the left side. We can multiply it by three to change this to three. And now all of our equation is balanced. Very good. And don't forget that whenever you have anything blank, put a one in front. All right, so now it's your turn to try for all three worksheets. If you ever run into a situation where things get pretty complicated or you did something wrong, it's okay, no problem. Just erase it and then start over again. Now, before you finish the rest, I want to go over the last page with you with the link to the website as I find this website very useful. So go ahead and follow along with me. So here's the fourth page. 
that has the link. It takes us to a really fun cam balancing online website. You can click on the link after you open the worksheet or you can type it in. It's funbaselearning.com slash chemistry slash cam balancer. Now just a few notes about this website is that it does lag a lot. I mean, when you go from one problem to the next, sometimes it takes up to two minutes. So it's just an FYI, but just be a little bit patient. It's really worth it. So we'll start the game. So to give us an unbalanced equation, we have is Fe iron plus sulfur will produce FeS. So what we should do first is if you put one on everything, it will pop up the equation. And this way it allows you to see the left side and the right side, how it's balanced or not. In this case, it is balanced. We have one Fe, one Fe, and one S for one S. So once you're good to go, just click on the balance. All right, correct. Good job, guys. In Latin, ferrum means iron. From ferrum comes the symbol Fe and the word farrier, a blacksmith who puts iron shoes on horses. Also, sulfur is a yellow powder. So this is the reason why iron start with Fe because it uses the Latin root ferrum instead of IR or I. That's why some of the elements, it uses the Latin root. So that's why the symbol is different from the element's name. Okay, once you click on OK, it'll take you to the next one. So here we have an equation, it's unbalanced, and we can see that there's more CO2 than over here. First thing I would recommend you to do is put one on everything, just so the equation kind of pops up and it allows you to see much better. Um, the line connecting them shows that this H2, so there's two H connected to a line. So if you were to adjust the amount coefficient, it also pops up additional H's and that will follow with the equation, which is nice. So unfortunately on paper, you can't do the same thing, but you can draw out the same thing. And if you do, just use the line to connect them. So here we have Cl2 and here we have is HCl. So we see that there is more H and CL on the left side and the right side will increase our HCL on the right side. And notice how they add in another HCL connected to a line. And now we have the same amount of H and the same amount of CL on both sides. So let's click balance. Correct. HCL is hydrochloric acid, the stomach acid that breaks down the food you eat. Hmm. If it breaks down the food you eat and it's an acid, doesn't that dissolve through our stomach? A mucus lining protects the stomach itself. Ah, okay. Too much HCL can get past the lining and give you an ulcer. Okay, so that's how you get an ulcer. All right, Mg plus O2 will produce MgO. Let's start by putting one on everything. <clears throat> so if you do it on paper, you would have done the same thing. You don't have to put the one on everything. You just simply draw out one MgO with another O connected to a line, MgO. Okay, so let's combine it. Uh, let's balance the equation. We see there's two O on the left side and one on the right side. We'll multiply the coefficient by two. So as you see, when you add in a two times MgO, we added in another MgO, which is the reason why. Now this two times O, we have two O, and this two times Mg, that's why we have two Mg. And that's the reason why the amounts increase altogether because the coefficient affects the whole equation and not just an individual element. So now the number of O on the right side and the number of O on the left side is balanced, but our Mg is not balanced, so we have to increase this by two, and therefore our equation is balanced. All right, good job, self. In this equation, as magnesium metal burns, it gives off an intense white light, which is why it is used in pyrotechnics fireworks. Okay, so by now, hopefully you guys got the hang of it. There's a lot more question left out of 11. It does get a little bit harder. Uh, I would recommend you go to like about number seven. That's good enough, but you're free to go beyond seven if you want. So go ahead and play around with it. Just remember to put one, 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 and then that way it'll help you see the equation better. This is equation. This um, website is a great way to help you see why when you add in coefficient, the amount of elements changes on both sides. But it's not an easy thing to put on paper because you do have to do a lot of drawing. But if you're a person that's visual learner and you prefer to draw just to help you understand better, I totally recommend go for it. All right, so go ahead, guys. Spend the rest of the time and work on the remaining, on the balance equation that we did earlier. All right, have fun. <laughs>